Welcome back and in this segment we're happy to have with us Ms. Nouran Ahmad Gour and actually Nouran in this episode we will be congratulating her because she achieved the ranking number three worldwide and of course in the sports of squash. Well, good morning and welcome with us Nouran and congratulations on the new record now you're number three in squash and you achieved that the past November last month. Yeah. Thank you. yeah. Good morning, Ron. Congratulations. Thank and you. first of all, tell us more about this rank and more about your feelings. Um, I'm really proud of achieving this ranking. Uh, it's my highest, my highest ranking, uh, being world number three. Um, it's quite hard because uh, to <coughs> achieve uh, a good ranking, you have to be consistent for all over the year. We we have from 10 to 12 tournaments each year so you have to perform well in, e in every single one so it's quite hard to be consistent and to preserve this performance all over the year. Now Nuran actually is quite interesting because the first three ranks they are Egyptian. Yeah. Yes and now tell me about the, the, the match itself that you had to play and winning the, the third title and how do you feel that the three of you ladies are in the first place? That's quite awesome. Um, the ranking appeared in the middle of the tournament, actually, and I think it's the first time in history to have number one, two, three from the same country in squash, and then the women as well. So it gave us like a confidence and a boost to, to achieve more and to, to win this title. Uh, and I'm glad uh, we did it uh, in France last week. Yes. Well, uh, before we continue the interview, we'll be looking at a report about Nuran. So we'll enjoy together the following report about her and then we'll continue our interview with her. For this year's Alam British Open, please welcome from Egypt, Nuran Goha. Welcome back and we're continuing our interview with Nuran Gohar and she's now ranking number three in squash for ladies. Welcome with us again as we continue our interview with you. Nuran, talking about, um, just as you mentioned right now, to have the, three, uh, the first three to be from Egypt, from here I would like to talk also about the popularity of this game in Egypt nowadays. Well, of course we can feel that maybe squash can be number two after soccer because we all know how Egyptians are fond of football. But I can see a lot of fans actually following with the squash and they know all about the game and they are moving from one place to the other to find out more about this game. Yeah, it's getting better. Uh, media is uh, more talking about the squash players and they're more interested in squash because we Egyptians are, are like excelling in squash. Uh, and the, um, the man we have like seven in the top ten and then the woman four, so it's quite awesome. Um, we, we are having more events here in Egypt, major events. We had the Ahram uh, in September. Uh, putting the glass court in front of the pyramids was such a great venue and everyone was around the world was like, can't believe this such a beautiful venue. Uh, there is also Alguna. It's one of the major events for the man. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a women event, but we hope it will be one day a women event as well. So yeah, it's, it's getting better, it's getting bigger in Egypt and it's quite good. <laughs> now it's interesting because starting from 2013 up till now, you've been really uh, achieving high goals starting in Prague, in Texas and now uh, last tournament. How do you manage? And in three years you managed to reach the uh, top three. Uh, how, tell us more about you, uh, your itinerary or your daily routine. How do you manage? So um, I'm studying right now. I'm not a full-time squash player. Mm. Um, it's hard. <laughs> but, 
So uh, I'm trying to manage between both. Um, I train six times a week, mm -hmm. three to four hours per day. Uh, I have one day rest, which is Friday. Uh, mm -hmm. I study in the morning, so my training is, uh, in, the, is in the afternoon from six to nine. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's and a normal. Also, day. do you have uh, talking about the physical fitness exercises yeah. and uh, nutrition? I believe that of course uh, your the ho your whole life changed a lot. Sure, yeah. Um, Since so when did you start, by the way? Uh, I started playing squash at the age of eight. But um, before eight, uh, I played gymnastics and swimming, but I didn't like it, so <laughs> I changed to squash. But it was a must. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because. Um, it improves your fitness, gymnastics and swimming. I and can see this up till now. It's a must for the kids. Yeah, the you children. have to sort. They are crying in the exercises, but it's like the basic. No you have to finish. You have to complete. Yeah, it's the, it's the basic sport. You have to you have to swim for sure. And gymnastics give you um, flexibility, strength. So it's good for other sports as well. Um, but I didn't like. Then you it. decided to move on to the squash. To squash, yeah. My dad was playing squash, uh, but for fun, not not a professional one. Uh, my uncle and my mom were tennis table players, but they were like champions, uh, African champions and Arab chief second, last second. So, um, but I liked squash more, so that's why I decided to, to continue squash. Now, I'm quite interested in uh, the difference between hardball and softball squash, and, and the, which one do you play? No, or, or is that a wrong term? No, like softball and hardball, is, it's more like a fun sport. Yeah. And it appeared in the US, mm -hmm. but it's not like the professional, it's not the professional squash. One. Yeah, it's not but, the but then the professional one will be always the hardball, or, or, or yeah, actually play. it's not, uh, these terms do not exist in squash when it comes to professional play. No, it's called squash. Mm. Hardball and softball, it's more like squash, but it's a bigger court mm -hmm. and it's um, two players play, mm -hmm. so it's like a double uh, double game, mm -hmm. but it's not squash. But it's, it, it's more like a hobby a fun, thing. Yeah, a fun, fun thing, yeah. yeah. Let me ask you about the preparations for mm -hmm. each tournament, because of course sometimes, as you, as you mentioned, consistency is something very, very important, but sometimes there are certain tournaments you sure. will be scared of and you will be just trying to, to, to train much more than others. Is it correct? Yeah, sure. Um, you have like, you set goals before, uh, before uh, each season. Um, there is tournaments more important than others, but we are trying to perform good in all, in of, all of them. But it's not always possible. So you just target main tournaments, the one you really want to, to do a, a great thing in it. So the main tournaments for us is like the World Open, that's the number one. Mm -hmm. And then we have tournaments called the World Series tournaments. It's like <coughs> the Grand Slam in tennis. So we, we are having five, and that's like the major one as well. So but when they are all practical, uh, just like practical training, I mean, or something like this, or? No, no there are major tournaments. It's like, th 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 that's the tournaments. You, no, I mean, you, you can consider it as because if you are preparing for the world tournament, for example, but you are playing other tournaments, again, it's a practice. Yeah, for sure. Yes. But, but at With the, the same, same time, uh, spirit of yeah, being sure, in a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Now, Nuran, tell us more about the past tournament. Which was uh, the most challenging uh, game for you that you were really like keen that, oh, if I, this will be a turning point for me if I scored well? <laughs> For mm -hmm. sure, uh, it was uh, Hong Kong Open. Mm -hmm. It's one of the World Series tournaments. So it was one of my first uh, title for a World Series. Mm -hmm. It was such a big thing for me because I was seeded number eight in this tournament and I won it, uh, beating world number two and world number three and then world number five in the final. So it was quite awesome for me and it was very challenging. Mm -hmm. No one could like expect it. So And I played my best squash in it and I was really playing really well, so yeah, it, it's like the best tournament I've ever played. Yeah. Well, of course, you are still happy with the, the new rank, of yeah, course. Yeah, sure. But again, the challenging part is how to maintain it and to even sure. to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I believe this is going to be the most challenging or difficult part, right? What are you going to do? Uh, trying more, <laughs> trying to, to do better results. Um, yeah, I achieved good what things. What is coming next? Uh, the TUC Tournament of Champions, it's in New York in January. So it's one of the best tournaments in the year as well. It's, it's quite a, a big tournament. Uh, the glass court actually is put in the <coughs> Grand Central. 
So everyone comes and watch, and it's a very, very big event in squash. Um, and last year I lost in the semi-final, so I hope I can do a better result there. Around how many teams will be participating, or how many countries? Do you, uh, do you it's know? an individual uh, event, but all the countries around the world participate in it. It's like. Is there a certain country you're like worried, not worried, but you're sort of uh, cautious about playing against or you have so, concerns? Egyptian players are the best. <laughs> and then there is uh, England as well. Um, uh, the US, uh, they have a very good player called, Aman uh, she's named Amanda Sokhi. She's also uh, a very good player. There are lots of good players, like all the top 10 girls are very hard to beat nowadays. So all the matches count. Also what I like the most about participating in these tournaments is also the idea of the experience you gain, not only sure. in the game, yeah. but definitely your personality changed yeah, a lot because yeah. since you were young, you are moving alone independently, participating in different countries, far away from your homeland, down, different cultures, uh, different people. So what did you learn from this and how did you see this? I learned to be more depend in, yeah, independent. Um, I've traveled since the age of 15 alone, so it was quite hard at the beginning. But you learn a lot when you are alone. And Which country you like the most? Oh, uh, that's a quite hard question. <laughs> um, I like France because I speak French as well, so it's easier for me to communicate there. Um, the Far East as well is nice, Malaysia. Um, it's different. They have different so you vibes. around the world. Yeah, actually. like we uh, we have like four or five tournaments in the U.S. each year, and then we have about three, four tournaments in Asia, and then some in Europe. So we are Everywhere. always moving. Yeah. <laughs> and what about uh, your expectations for the next game? Which team or which player you you will be preparing for more? And do you like watch videos or on the YouTube, in other words, of certain players to see their technique so that you can practice? Tell me more. Yeah, oh. sure. So, as I told you, all players in the top 10 now are very hard to beat. You have to be 100% like playing your best squash to, <coughs> to beat them on, on this day. Mm -hmm. um, before a match, yeah, um, we know each other game quite well because we played each other a lot. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's better when you watch the game. Mm -hmm. You learn more than, in fact, to, if you are in, in on court. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's when you are outside the court, you can see the, the errors and the weak points better than when you are playing. So before each match, I'm watching the one I'm playing, my opponent, and see, uh, and see with my coach what, what's going to be, uh, what, what, what will be the plan or what are we going to do. You know, that's, that's the preparation for a match. And of course, playing and studying is not that easy, but I always see that all those who excelled in sports, they are very clever, are you? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort <Because> of. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> so far. Yeah. Because how do you manage to arrange uh, the time management, of course, and studying? Yeah, how far did the playing the game help you in studying? Um, it helps me because I know how, how precious it is the time. I'm trying to manage it because I don't have a lot of time to do so. When I'm doing something, I'm trying to do it 100% and to, to do it efficiently so that I don't go back to it. So it's hard, but it pays off at the end. Well, uh, Egyptian squash champion Nuran Gohar, uh, thank you very much and congratulations again thank on your you. ranking. We hope <laughs> we brought you this, this bouquet of flowers. Of course, you, you deserve more than that, but this is just a, a symbolic congratulations to you for winning the third title. And hopefully, uh, we hope, although you, you, the three of you girls are Egyptian, but still, <laughs> since you're with us, I hope that you achieve the first ranking as well. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And that much. brings us to the end of this episode of Breakfast Show. But before we wrap up our episode, I'd like to thank my colleague, Nashua Rasha. Thank you very much, Nashua. Thank you, Rasha. Thank you all for joining us for this edition of our Breakfast Show. And stay tuned for more coming up on Nile TV International. So thank you for joining us and stay tuned.